The original PlayStation console was a dominant gaming force for its time, beating out the Nintendo 64 who refused to take part in the CD-ROM market, and full-on raffle stomping the Sega Saturn because of a litany of reasons, namely poor business decision on Sega's part. While the Sony executive decided to take a piss in Nintendo's soda during the Switch Online launch because around midnight Pacific time, or 3 a.m. Eastern time, news outlets started to report that the PlayStation Classic, a mini console that will come with 20 bundled games installed, will be releasing in early December. Now, only 25% of the games on the system have been listed, naming Final Fantasy VII, Jumping Flash, Ridge Racer Type 4, Tekken 3, and Wild Arms, and obviously the others will be announced before the release date, I figured I would put together a list of 10 games I would love to see on the system since top 10 lists are what all the children are raving about these days. Now I'm going to be looking at this from a limitless potential and not factoring in things like licensing rights, as I'm sure there will be some limitations from Sony's perspective. So hit that subscribe button as we talk about 10 games that need to be on the PlayStation Classic. As a side note, these are just some games that should really be included in no particular order. If you disagree, that's fine, but let's make sure this doesn't turn into a flame war about how your childhood is not my childhood. Number 10. Metal Gear Solid. The pinnacle Metal Gear game for a lot of people, and one of the best stealth games of all time. Solid Snake infiltrates a nuclear missile site in Alaska that has been taken over by the Genome Soldiers and Foxhound. I would write more about this story, but it can get incredibly in-depth. The game helped popularize the stealth genre in the modern gaming world. The tension created when trying to take enemies out one at a time without being detected made every minute full of unease. Great characters like Solid Snake, Meryl, Liquid Snake, Psycho Mantis, Revolver Ocelot, and many more helped set the stage for what the future Metal Gear game needed to live up to. And let's not forget about the story, oh my god, the story. A man having to fulfill his mission while constantly raising questions about what is most important, such as honor, following orders, or even the legitimacy of nuclear weapons. My big concern with this, the fact that Konami has pretty much done everything it can to scrub the name Hideo Kojima from its skin. After the falling out between Hideo Kojima and Konami just before the release of Metal Gear Solid 5, Konami has been retroactively removing anything that looks like Hideo from any game or reference. A move that is absolute cockamamie bullshit, but a move that can absolutely be done. Because of this, I wouldn't be surprised if Metal Gear Solid is absent from the PlayStation Classic. I mean, when you're fighting Psycho Mantis and you have to unplug the controller, his freaking name pops up on the game screen. You know they are not going to like that. Number 9. Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3. Okay, yes, this is technically three games, but you know what? Fuck you, it's my list. All three of the Resident Evil games are good. Let me say that again. All three of the Resident Evil games are good. I'm sure people are willing to debate that one of the games is better than the other two, but that's not the point. All three games are good. At least from a gameplay perspective. Voice acting had pretty much garbage across the board. One of the first iterations of survival horror genre had you fighting against hordes of zombies with little to no ammo for weapons. Many a times I would play these games and try to only use my knife as much as possible because who knows when the next set of 15 bullets would pop up. Combine that sense of fear with interesting but simple puzzle solving and multiple paths to an end game for multiple playthroughs, you have a great recipe for a game that will keep me pinned to my TV for hours. Plus there is something so gratifying when you headshot a zombie and his head explodes into so many pieces. Number 8. Silent Hill what do you do when your parents tell you that there's too much blood and gore in Resident Evil for you to play? Tell them you want Silent Hill because it's a psychological horror game. This was by far the scariest game I played on the original PlayStation. Tell me you didn't get chills when the game first booted up, you heard that mandolin start and you saw the text that said, The fear of blood tends to create fear for the flesh. I originally had this as a demo with some other Konami game, and the first thing the game tells you is that it's best to play in the dark. And holy shit, that first scene when the snow changes to rain and you're trapped in a fenced-in basketball court, only to get killed by these tiny children dragging you down? I don't think I could sleep for a few nights. The entire game of Harry Mason looking for his daughter Cheryl after a car crash in a small town only to find out that it is also home to the occult led by Dahlia Gillespie. Does the story sound amazing to you? Me neither. But the horror is what drew you in. On top of that, the game has multiple endings depending on actions that you take, some of which you would never know unless you looked up a walkthrough, including a super strange one involving UFOs and aliens. Number 7. Castlevania Symphony of the Night 
With the recent Kickstarter success of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, I think it would be foolish if this game doesn't see a new light. One of, if not the best Castlevania games in the entire franchise, this version harkens back to Castlevania II Simon's Quest, making it as much of an RPG as well as a platformer. Equipping various items, each with different stats, allowed you to customize your character more to your play style, all in the effort of trying to stop your evil father Dracula, the same Dracula who's been a pain in the ass since the first game. While many games were in the process of breaking into the 3D style of gameplay during this time, Symphony of the Night kept to its roots following a 2D experience with highly detailed sprites. Each one of them excellently designed in order to give you a finer detail not seen in the previous games. And the art style was phenomenal. Done by the famed artist Ayama Kojima, no relationship to Hideo, she has been a staple of what the art style of Castlevania should be. As a side note, I know that they recently announced that they would be re-releasing Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood on PS4, so this one may be entirely in question. I can't imagine Sony would want to cannibalize itself by releasing the game and the classics so close together. Number 6. Final Fantasy VIII. I can already hear the sounds of pitchforks being sharpened, just hear me out before you draw and quarter me. I am a big Final Fantasy fan. Actually, let me change that statement real quick. I am a big JRPG fan, and the Final Fantasy games are definitely part of it. Hell, Xenogears is my favorite RPG of all time, but I can tell you right now you won't see it anywhere in this list because I know there are better or more popular games out there. And I will be the first to admit Final Fantasy VIII is not the best Final Fantasy game, but there's a reason it's on this list. All the other Final Fantasy games, starting with seven, are readily available. You can get them on almost any other console, but Final Fantasy VIII never gets any real love. The combat system has a hard learning curve and the story's a little difficult to follow, but that doesn't stop it from being enjoyable or allowing me to play through the game multiple times. Even with the recent Nintendo Direct stating that a bunch of Final Fantasy games were coming to Switch, Nintendo opted to put a gunblade to Final Fantasy VIII and pull the trigger. Number 5. Any 2D Fighter. PlayStation had a bunch of great 2D fighters that came out for it, usually ported straight from the arcades. Personally, I remember spending a lot of quarters in X-Men Children of the Atom. Most people know that game as where the assets for the Marvel characters in Marvel vs. Capcom came from, but for me it was a great time at the local pool whipping people around as Omega Red. Honestly, any Capcom fighter would be great. Maybe one of the Street Fighter Alpha games. Hell, I would even be content with Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. I have to imagine that this is going to come to light as the system comes with two freaking controllers. It would be simply idiotic if they didn't include a 2D fighting game. Number 4. Twisted Metal, the Mercedes-Benz of car combat games. I initially started my car combat career in a small clone game called Road Trip. The premise was still the same, use your car to destroy other cars, but Twisted Metal was where it was at. Action-packed mayhem that wasn't violent or bloody enough to get parents worked up. It even spawned a series of sequels that were equally great. All the brainchild of game designer David Jaffe, who I actually got the pleasure to meet when he was clearing out his old studio in San Diego. R.I.P. Bartlett Jones. And as the same with the 2D fighting games, the system will come with two controllers. There's no reason not to include this game for multiplayer action. Number 3, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Tell me when you first read this title, you immediately heard the song Superman by Goldfinger start playing. I will know if you're lying, and so will God. When the first demo disc of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater started making its way through my school, all of my friends were blown away. Even though you could only get to play one stage, it didn't matter. That stage was awesome enough to keep you playing for hours. Great controls, great gameplay, great music, it was just all so great. And with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 and 3 released, they all improved on the original formula. Any of the three games would be fantastic to have. However, this is another title that I would flag under the unlikely column simply because of all the licensed music associated with it. Unless those licenses were renewed, and I'm highly doubting they were, Chances are, if this game made it to the console, the songs would be replaced with either some stock bullshit or other songs currently in Sony's wheelhouse. Neither of those options is really ideal. Number 2. Tomb Raider. Quite possibly one of the most iconic names associated with the original PlayStation, Lara Croft. I'm not gonna lie, I was never a big fan of the original Tomb Raider games, but that didn't stop her from spawning sequels, spin-off games, reboot games, movies, and reboot movies. A lot of people liked it because it made the primary game protagonist female, a move that was not all common during that time frame. And come to think of it, it's still not that common today in the mainstream market. But I digress. Not having at least one of the Tomb Raider games on the system would be a huge misstep. Given how well the relationship between IDOS, Square Enix, and Sony has been over the last two decades, I think this would be the game that I would put money on being on the system. Now before we get to number one, as an honorable mention, Xenogears. Just as I stated before, this is my favorite RPG of all time. The mix between the 2D sprites and the 3D rendered world with a fun combat and a deep and complex story will always keep this game close to my heart. Number one, Gran Turismo. The granddaddy of all racing simulations games goes to Gran Turismo. I'm not one for the simulation style games, but this one is pretty good at keeping my attention. 
I have a very fond memory of visiting a friend's house and seeing their living room set up with a wheel to play Gran Turismo. The fact that everything was so accurate and gave you the ability to fine tune everything in your car was so immersive. Sure, it may look dated these days, but show me a game on this list or any other PlayStation game that doesn't look like shit. Excluding Castlevania Symphony of the Night, that game always looks awesome. As a side note, there are a few things I would like to see avoided. The big one that I am sure is on everyone's mind is the artificial scarcity. Sony should be smart enough to know this, but Nintendo dropped the ball on its initial production run of the NES Classic, and kind of dropped the ball on the SNES Classic. It wasn't until almost a year and a half later that Nintendo re-released the NES Classic with a still subpar quantity at release. I certainly hope Sony was paying attention to this and has opted to produce the volume that will meet demand, especially since it's so close to holidays people will be attacking each other in the streets to get their hands on one of the systems. Sony should have no problem creating an ample supply for consumer demands. If they don't have enough upon release, they should still continue production in order to avoid the ignorant response that Nintendo gave us. I shouldn't have to pay scalpers to get my item. Additionally, the system should, and I'm sure eventually will, be hackable or moddable. The NES and SNES classics were incredibly easy to put custom ROMs on. I think it took me all of 20 minutes to add extra games to mine. I would hope Sony's console would be similar. For the original PlayStation, the copy protection was actually physical in nature, and I believe it had something to do with the distance between the disc and the laser. Because everything on here is stored on memory, there is no physical component associated with it. I would imagine the only way that they could prevent people from adding more games is to limit the amount of memory storage in the system, which I would imagine would only force people to remove the games they don't want and put on games that they do. Finally, the last bit, the Crash Bandicoot and Spyro games should be avoided as a whole. Not because they're bad games, but because the release of the recent HD collection for Crash Bandicoot and the soon-to-be-released HD collection of the Spyro games, people will already be playing them. This is a similar thought to how they will handle the Symphony of the Night scenario. It would be foolish to put these games on a console with limited capacity and outdated graphics. If I missed any games that you think should be on here, please let me know in the comments below because I know that there are so many amazing titles on the PlayStation 1. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you follow the three pillars of YouTube, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and ring the bell for notifications. My name is Ben Jorna, that's J-O-A-R-N-A. I will see you all next time.